So what do you call a magnetization video where you don't actually magnetize anything? I don't know. Anyway, so we've got our Paragon war suits all built up. Uh, a little bit all built up, a little bit all built up. A little bit all built up, yeah. What we've got is they're not currently body glued to le or le torso glued to legs. We don't have that. We've also not glued the gun. Now, I'm going to talk about how I did the guns in a second, but the reason I haven't glued the uh, legs to the torso, or rather the torso to the legs, is because I think that'll make it a little bit tricky to paint. I want to make sure I can get all the detail on the trim of the legs and things, so by not gluing it, it does make that... Uh, cack handed. It does make that much easier to get at, so hopefully that'll make it easier to paint. Let's talk magnetization. I was going to magnetize the guns. I don't think you need to. So when you're building it, and you get to the build stage where you're doing the guns, what you do is you glue the gun. It's handier if you use the uh, flamer because it's got a nice join on the heavier tube which means you can sort of get the tube in the right position so you can get this up here and the gun on the arm. So you take the arm which comes as that piece and you basically push it and don't glue it. Make sure you don't have a, a load of glue left over from gluing the gun halves together in there. So you might want to let this dry. You push that in there then you hold the, uh, I'll take that off because this is the easiest way to do it actually, is you take this piece, so this piece and some of the tube forms one part and then the remainder of the tube and the gun forms the next part, then the arm, so you have three parts to deal with. You hold this in position, you push the arm into the gun, you push the gun into the shoulder and then you make sure that the tubes are lined up nicely. Then you let that dry. Then, what you do is you pull the whole thing off so you'll get the arm stuck into the gun with the ammo, whatever the hell that is, and the tubing. That'll all come off in one part. Sort of like that, but with the arm stuck in it. Then you put a little bit of glue in the joint of the arm. You push that all in, hold that up, and let the arm glue in place. So effectively then, what you've got is the gun as one piece with the ammo feed, and the arm with the arm glued in. And that means you can take, I have no idea which gun goes with this, by the way. I'm going to pick them at random. Ho <laughs> oh, that was a perfect pick. So you can see this one is the tube. Now this one joins, I think, here or here. I can't remember which way around. But it's not a nice, neat, this one's got a nice, neat, um, almost slotted bit where the two halves of the, the tube join to make it a nice, easy way to get it joined. But you basically then glue the rest of these guns by pushing it onto the arm and then holding this piece and adding a bit of glue. You let that set, you pull it off. It's quite tricky. This is what I mean, you don't need to magnetize this. And then we're going for the third gun, which is a bolt gun. Pick one of the bolt guns at random. Oh my, oh my. Two for two, I love it. That was literally at random, by the way. And then the bolt gun, you do the exact same thing. It joins there or there. I can't remember which, but same basic principle. And you can see there that those are a perfect fit. Now, one of the model's guns was a little bit loose. I think that would tighten up with a bit of paint, but you want to make sure you've got this area well varnished because this is obviously bashing off it. And if you want extra security, you can either magnetize... I was stuff that with green stuff and then drill a magnet into it and maybe put a little magnet in there and then a little magnet in here and one in here but I don't think it needs it. Now, so that's that. Then you've also got the carapace weapons which I shall lift some out here for my little tub of mystery. My little tub of bits. These, uh, I might just pop that back on because it does look better. These go on here, so that is that side. That light's starting to bug me. Then this one is that side. 
So those are fairly... I mean, if I do... They're not coming off, so... Now, obviously, tolerances may vary. You might want to glue them in, but I've decided not to. Now, same thing with the missile launcher. So the storm bolters are fine, the missile launchers are fine. When we go to look at these weapons to magnetize them, I don't think you can... Well, you might be able to with this one by basically gluing that on, then cutting off at the wrist joint, then drilling in that way for a magnet, and then into the wrist for a magnet, and then cutting off the sword at the same point and gluing it for a magnet. But if we look at yon lady and grab her sword, mace, thing, weapon, which I think that's her one, you can see that it is essentially... <sighs> Hopefully you can see that, that it's basically... She's got half a hand, and the other half a hand is on the weapon. I don't think you could magnetize that, at least not without a very great deal of pain and difficulty. So I'm going to pick a weapon and stick to it. I don't know which one yet, which is why I haven't glued them. Plus I wanted you to see that. So... Shove that back on there. Hershey's got a weapon. We'll shove that back on there. And then we're going to talk about the models themselves, building them. Which was pleasant. They're not an unpleasant model to build. Fiddly. Takes a while. Mold lines were okay. A little bit on the, the shins, maybe. And I think I used the wrong helmet. I didn't use the uh, superior's helmet. But it doesn't really matter. Shoulder pads are interesting. The This shoulder pad, so you've got that front half is on the front half of the carapace. You'll see this if you look at the sprues. Then this half of the shoulder pad is a separate piece. And then the actual fleur de lis is a separate piece that slots in, which is a really nice way to do it. This one just is cut into the shoulder pad. Let me just make sure that's focused. Yeah, good enough. So that is just part of the, you know, two halves. That part of the shoulder pad separate. That part's attached to the carapace. And other than that, there isn't really much to say about this. Seeing them up close, I don't mind the lack of cloth. I would have preferred it. I think it would have looked nicer if they had had like a kilt the way uh, Morvin Val does. I'll put a little linky dinky up for the video for that one because nobody else has bloody watched. I mean, it's a nice video. Um, yeah, you don't get many spare parts for this. You get the parts to turn her into a standard Paragon worship, because obviously I think the unit can take up to six. Now, something else you might be able to do is if we take this one and, and off you pop, and then that, you could do something like a leg swap. I'm also fairly sure, although I haven't tried it, you could do an arm swap. So rather than have the gun on this one and then this gun on this one, swap the gun arms around but leave the sword arms alone so that you would get a difference. You know, if you're building a unit of six, you don't want to have three the same as three the same, if you know what I mean. So swapping the torsos between legs might do the trick or swapping the arms between models again might do the trick i haven't stuck her pistol on yet either i want to paint that separately and whether or not i actually stick it on i don't know or the ammo pouch on that side again i think it clutters the model up but yeah these are really easy models to build and i have to say i do like them more than i thought i was going to to be honest not 100% sure about the kilty bit, but... And you can't build it without it. Well, you might be able to trim the front one off if you wanted to. I don't know how that would look, but you could certainly give it a go. No reason why not, I think, if I remember rightly. And there's also no real gotchas when you're building this. You know, there's some models you sort of go, oh, crap, those two pieces are the wrong way around. Except maybe on the shoulder sockets. Just make sure you get those the right way around. The Adeptus Aurorotas Paragon Warsuits. So for those that don't know, the Morvan Val model 
features a relic version of these with slightly fancier weapons and things. So we can already see on this one we've got what looks like a flamer. Now I haven't looked at like data sheets for this. I've not looked at anything for this. So I'm coming this completely fresh, but I really liked the Morvan Val model. So I thought I would get these too. I wasn't originally going to get them, but I did. So anyway, I also like the fact that they've got a giant mace and a giant sword. So we'll see what these look like now. As I said, haven't looked at any reviews of these online, haven't looked at any uh, unboxings or anything, and I'm going to guess one and a half sprue, so one sprue and then half size sprue, so that's my guesses. We'll see how accurate I am. Obviously 60 mil base, because that's what Morvan Val's on. So plastic off, because it's shiny. So plastic off, quick look at the back of the box, nothing spectacularly exciting. Who are they fighting? Night Lords is that? I don't know, somebody. So remember I said one and a half sprues, might be two sprues, that would be lovely. And so it is in fact Three full spruce, that is much more than I was expecting. So we get our 360mm bases. Oop. We get our instruction booklet, we'll have a look at that in a minute. Then we get our transfers. I'll pop those into the pile of perpetual ignorage. And we'll have a look. Uh, so yeah, three, three full spruce, that's a lot more than I was expecting to get. Well that's good, because these are quite an expensive set, so. Okay, that's a bit underexposed, but it makes it easier to read. Okay, so we see we've got our uh, Paragon Superior, obviously the Sergeant and the regular one. So I don't know what options you get in this. It looks like a multi melt uh, something else, uh, a heavy boltery kind of thing. That's pretty cool. I really should read up on the rules for these, but seeing as how Games Workshop don't include the uh, weapon names, I don't see why I should. You could magnetize these. I'll have a look when I'm building them. I will, I promise. I'll see what they're like. Heavy flamer, multi melter, and heavy bolter options in this. And you've got to put the head in first. That's fine, that's fine. So that's something to note. If you are going to magnetize this, it's magnetize it at the gun level. Hmm. Severely tempted to magnetize these. I'll have to read the proper rules to see whether or not it's... Uh, each model or any model or if it's uh, all models it's probably in any model to be honest I don't know how much you guys like looking at sprues I kind of do here let me get these lights back on that's a bit too green I need to find a decent background color I really can't find a good background color that makes the sprues stand out so I mean, looking at this, and there's lots of small pieces with big clunky fingers. That'll be fun. But my main thing is, can I magnetize the weapons? It doesn't have the detail on the filigree that the Morvan Val did, which you would expect. She is a High Lord of Terra. Does have shoulder pads, though, that are sort of half built onto the top part and then half separate which is a weird way to do it but okay we've got our usual variety of heads one thing i do want to check here is that's those heads and then yeah they're different enough so it's not like they've just copied and pasted the heads. Let's have a look at the Sister Superior. And... Okay, I'm just gonna come right out and say it. I don't know what this face is about. But okay. Just make sure it's focused on it. Yeah, I don't know what that face is about, but... Hopefully that's enough sprue footage I can edit in. Now this one does have a bit more filigree. What about the others? Do they have that same piece? 
they have a similar piece there so hopefully you can see just a bit where my finger is that's the front of the chest piece obviously that's the sister superior is there another piece if you do want to build her as the sister superior there is so this one's got both this is definitely the sister superior sprue and then again with this one so yeah I mean also let's double check for sprue points joining places I don't like doesn't look like sorry I'm looking at this so it doesn't look like there's a sprue join anywhere that's going to be bad maybe the feet where it's the, the the top of the shoe but other than that I think that'll be okay so I am going to build these and prep them for magnetization so I shall come back when those are built if you've made it this far thanks very much for watching there's another couple of videos there you can click on you can click on the subscribe button if you want to uh, like the video if you want to stick a comment down if you've anything to say and in the meantime happy wargaming and i'll see you next time